Nature, Will Robinson. Nature, no Will Robinson. Nature. I think when it's flown right, aviation is pretty safe. Especially with the redundancy and warning systems built into planes these days. In prior videos, I've highlighted the traffic alert feature of my plane. Later in this video, I'll discuss some of the other safety features you might not be aware of, so keep watching till the end. First, let's review the redundancy features built into my Vans RV-12. I have not one, but two independent electric fuel pumps. And I have three independent ways to measure the fuel quantity on board. A mechanical float gauge, an induction gauge mounted inside the fuel tank, and a computerized calculator that derives remaining quantity based on fuel consumed. I have not one, but two independent generators on board. Each one can power the bus. But each also powers the two spark plugs per cylinder in the Rotax engine. I have a battery master power switch and a backup power switch. I have a separate battery capable of powering the pilot's primary flight display. And in the event the pilot's PFD should fail, I have a second MFD screen with everything that's needed to fly to a successful landing. So let's recap. I'm dividing the safety features into two groups. Those that are built into the airframe and hardware and those that are integrated into the flight electronics provided by Garmin. Now I suspect that Dynon systems have their counterparts to the Garmin systems too. Of those built into the airframe, we have two fuel pumps, three ways to measure fuel, a backup power switch, two generators, two ignition systems, a backup battery for the EFIS screen, two EFIS panels, and although not discussed before, we have the standard stall warning horn triggered by a vane on the leading edge of the left wing and an angle of attack system providing a tone with high angles of attack and an optional angle of attack display on the EFIS tapes screen. That's a lot, but there's more. Now we get into the arena of electronics provided by the Garmin G3X system installed on my plane. These features I've already reported on in prior videos, so not to dwell on them. We have the traffic alerts, both visual and audible, through the ADS-B system. We have a weather display, also provided through ADS-B. There's a level button on the autopilot to bring the plane into a stable level flight mode. I also have shown in a previous video the verbal stall warning system, complete with a stick pusher. So let's just demonstrate the terrain and obstacle alerts. Shortly after takeoff, I steered toward a mountain with a microwave tower on the top of it to serve as an obstacle. Pretty rough down here. Yeah, it's a typical bumpy day here in the south down low. So coming up, you're going to hear the terrain warning as we approach the base of the mountain. Caution, terrain. Even with some background radio chatter going on, these warnings are hard to ignore. Obstacle ahead, pull up. Caution, terrain. Three miles north, inbound, landed one six, straight in approach, Pickens. This is that flight segment on a sectional, and the green line shows my path as I turn right to avoid the obstacle. There is a saying that the most dangerous part of a car is the nut holding the steering wheel. Now, the same goes for airplanes. With all the features I've just listed, you still can get into trouble through inattention or poor airmanship. So Garmin introduced the Electronic Stability and Protection System. The idea here is that the plane will try hard to keep the pilot inside a safe flight envelope. This, by the way, is the feature I mentioned at the start of the video. I'm going to demonstrate this by exceeding the limits of this envelope. Bank angle. Bank angle. Bank angle. Thank you. 
Pitch limit. Pitch limit. Meanwhile, heading back to the airport. Pickett's County traffic, 6 West B Sierra's left base, runway 16 at Pickett's. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. Notice how high I am on approach. I'll slip it in. 500. Caution, sink rate. Caution, sink rate. So that's a demonstration of Garmin's ESP feature. Now I've already posted a video of the underspeed warning, and I think I'd be stupid to intentionally invoke the overspeed warning. That would not be safe. Oh, and uh, how did the rest of that landing turn out? Well, let's let's see. So, Will Robinson, I think we've mitigated the danger of flight as much as possible. Yeah, there's still the weather and other external factors to manage, but overall, we should be safe if we properly and competently fly our plane. So, now that we've reviewed all the safety features of the plane, it's time to go fly. Subscribe to the channel and come along with us on our next flight. Hope to see you there.